Okay, hello everyone, Daniel Kerr here. Today we're gonna do some multi-track MIDI recording in the Korg EMX, right? So let's just say that you got a banger in your DAW. Uh, I'm gonna be using a DAW for this example. I'm gonna be using Ableton Live. Uh, there are some things that are special to Ableton Live that you're gonna be seeing, but you can figure these things out if you know whatever DAW you use, you know, Studio One or, or Pro Tools or anything, um, Logic, anything that you use, FL Studio. If uh, you know your program, you know how to send MIDI out per channel, right? I'm going to be doing it in Ableton because that's what I use, but it's not limited to DAW um, jams anyway. It's, let's just say that you've got some tracks in your RS7000 or your Roland MV or your Syntax or something and you want to transfer those into the EMX, this is how to do it. Okay, so right away I don't have a track that I want to transfer over, um, so I'm going to build one in Ableton real quick. Right now I've got a MIDI channel. I'm going to control D and make five copies of this so that it is corresponds with the five synth parts in the EMX. Now I'm just going to grab some uh, plugins and load them and start making some music real quick. This isn't going to take long. First is Surge XT, one of my favorite freeware synthesizers. Not worried about sound design here, just going to lay down something and then change the voices later. But it, honestly, it doesn't even matter what I change the voices to. I just change the voices only uh, to keep the creative juices flowing because once they get it gets into the EMX, it's going to be different voices as we all know. Next is the Vaporizer 2, which did become free. One of my favorite synthesizers of all time. It used to cost a couple hundred bucks, and now it's free. The UI is very hard to get used to. I think that has to do with why it didn't take off. Add an arpeggiator. I'm using the QWERTY typing keyboard to enter these notes, by the way. Back to plugins. Grab a Zebralette. Another free offering. Notice a trend. Add something a little higher this time. Hand played arpeggio. Next we'll grab a Loom, not free, but it's from Air. It's a spectral synthesizer, probably one of my favorite synthesizers currently to use. Change the voice. Lastly, we'll grab Jura. Anybody who uses the Akai Force or MPC knows this plugin. Basically, a Juno 106 clone, it looks like and feels like. Not quite, it's a lot more full featured than a 106. Juno 106 was one of my first synthesizers that I ever used in the late 80s, early 90s. Arpeggiator. It sounds beautiful. Grab some drum loops here just so, to hear some drums with the synths just to, to get a feel. Obviously these drum loops are not going to be able to go into the EMX because the EMX is not a sampler.
right, now, what I'm gonna do next, now that I have all the music, right, is I'm going to go into each one of these tracks, right? Each one of these tracks, and I'm going to swap the current plugin for Ableton Live's protocol for sending MIDI out, which is the external instrument. In the external instrument, I'm gonna send MIDI to my interface, which in this case is the Steinberg UR22, and then I'm gonna set the channel, and that's gonna send MIDI to the EMX. Check it out. MIDI out to the Steinberg channel one. Now I'm going to hold, turn that hot swap off, hold select, which makes a copy, and drag that instrument to the next track. And I'm going to set that one to channel two. Notice the arpeggiator is still there. We need that. Hold uh, control and, and drag it over. That's what I meant. Hold control and drag it over. It makes a copy. In channel three, gonna set that to channel three and then send it, uh, make a copy in track four, track four, etc. And lastly, channel five. And for this example, I have MIDI out going from my Steinberg interface to the MIDI in on the Core Game X. Now, here, I'm gonna go to MIDI. And I'm gonna hold down shift, right? And I'm gonna pe press pad number 12 right here. And that's gonna get me into the uh, MIDI utility. MIDI filter. And I have everything turned off. Use the dial to open and close things, except for note. See that? Note. Clock is internal. Something happens when you sync the Ableton's clock to the Korg clock. When you slave MIDI sync on the Korg to Ableton, Ableton messes up. It sends some um, signals backwards. I don't know if it's in my interface or if it's in the software, but nonetheless, it doubles or even uh, quadruples the speed of playback. So what I do here is I'm going to just leave the Ableton sequencer running on its own autonomously. I'm going to leave the Korg sequencer running on its own, but they're going to be at the exact same tempo. Then I'm going to initiate record on the Korg, and as soon as it comes around, right, as soon as it plays the eight bars, as soon as it comes around, I'm going to hit play on Ableton, and it's going to record those notes in all five tracks at once, because it's sending these five tracks with five MIDI channels, it's gonna record all in one take. Okay, check it out. Okay, run it. What I did here on the EMX is I held down shift and pad seven, which is clear part, because what I did is I just grabbed like um, an existing pattern in my EMX, right? And I, I just didn't wanna change all the voices yet, right? But I don't wanna start from scratch and have to, to choose voices. I want to just take something that's already there. There's already some drums recorded, which you'll hear in a moment. So I'm gonna go shift and pad seven, which is clear part, and I'm selecting the parts right now to, um, to delete. Let me go back a little, I'll show you. Right here, shift, pad seven, select all the parts and the accents, hit seven again, everything's clear. Now I'm gonna set the tempo to 132. Right now I'm going down because that's that pattern that I'm gonna to use to record this information is only four bars. So I'm changing the length to eight bars, which doubles the length so that it can fit all of the information from, from Ableton or whatever sequencer. Now put it into record. And we're just listening to these drums. Notice there's no synth parts. And as soon, as soon it's already engaged for record, as soon as it get back, gets back to one, I'm going to hit the space bar on Ableton and start playback, which you're listening to now. All five voices, all five tracks are recording at once again. And notice that the voices are different because they're EMX sounds. Okay, everything's quiet here because the accent is turned up. As soon as I turn the accent down, it raises the volume. Adding some more drums here. I'm gonna change these voices in a moment. Basically, I'm putting a break in 
because the original in Ableton had breaks. Change this to a kick drum. Boom. Change this to a snare. Gonna send that snare to the compressor in effects one. There we go. Changing these drum sounds just a tad. Very limited amount of, of drum editing functionality on the EMX, unfortunately. I'm trying to put the hats in by hand, but I decided to just put the first two notes in on the first bar there. Hold down shift and pad two, which is move data, change it to repeat, and just copy two notes all the way across the eight bars. I'm muting all of the drums except for the first, or excuse me, muting all of the synths except for the first voice here. If you remember that first voice is long sustained notes or, or um, uh, note on basically mode. And so I change it to gate, there we go. Finding a good voice that I like. Right now it's in unison, but. Cross modulation. Voice two. so I can hear what I'm doing. sequence. Finally, 
number five. Notice how I'm using the accent to mix all of the synth levels against the drums. If I turn it down, turn the accent down, the synth levels rise until I put um, accent points in there, which I have not. Write this to be 20, I think. So that's how it's done. Um, I just ordered a Digitact 2 and um, it's going to be here in a few days and I'm super, super stoked to be able to get into it and use it and show you guys how I work things around. Until then, I got two or three more EMX videos. I'm going to show you how to make a techno rumble next and probably how to do risers and impacts. Maybe a couple more things. Anyway, I love you guys and uh, go to ghostwrittenclips.com and get on my email list and get some free stuff. Uh, otherwise, uh, like and subscribe or whatever you want to do. I don't care.